I was talking to Ed Kearney from Luxor Homes uh, recently. We, we both know he's a, a client of yours and a um, friend of yours. Um, we just had a little conversation around different contracts and he kind of mentioned one thing that I was going to ask you about because some of the um, the people used to have in their subcontractor agreement the, the if paid, when paid clause, right? Yep. Um, do you want to explain what, what that is and, and why it's no longer really legally binding? Sure. So when I started out as a lawyer in 2002, I knew nothing at all about construction law. Um, and I remember being in my office and my senior partner dropped a copy of the Construction Contracts Act on my desk and he said, hey, um, I think you should read this. Uh, I think this is going to transform the industry. And I read it and, and ever since then I've been a huge fan, a uh, massive fan of the Construction Contracts Act. Uh, and that act, all it's about is really getting paid. It's just a way to get paid more quickly because Parliament recognised that um, construction is so hard, it's so easy for disputes to arise, it's so easy for people to set off or make deductions and ultimately it cripples the industry, and it had been, and, and it still is to some extent. So um, the, the key thing here is that it's a payment regime, and it involves uh, a different way of doing your invoices, and I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that many contractors um, listening to this are already doing this, and I'll come to that shortly, but it also outlawed pay when paid. And so that has been the case since the, the Act came into effect on the 1st of April 2003. So since the 1st of April 2003, it is illegal, it is prohibited to say to somebody, I haven't been paid by the client, so I can't pay you. You can't do that. Now, people do do that. I still see in 2024 an email saying, I haven't been paid, so I can't pay you. I mean, I get it. Yeah. But it's, it, 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 is, it is illegal. You yeah. can't do for it. For the last 21 years, that's been illegal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and some people, when I say pay when paid, it's illegal. It's been illegal for the last over 20 years. They sort of look at me with surprise. Because, uh, you know, they often think it's a genuine position to take. It's not. Um, and sometimes having a firm email response just saying, hey, look, pay when paid is illegal. See Section 13 of the Construction Contracts Act. Couldn't be clearer. Then that actually helps often bring the discussion around to, well, what can you do? Okay. Well, let's talk about the Construction Contracts Act a little bit and how that can help builders... Um, and a lot of builders don't know about it, which is, you know, even though it's been yep. around for 21 years. Um, we'll talk a little bit about how they can help builders make sure they get paid and make sure they yep. sort of follow the right procedures yep. um, to ensure that they actually do get paid. And once you kind of understand it, because I've, I've only been explained it to me like recently, um, once you kind of start to get an understanding of it, it's, it actually is quite beneficial if you do know your way around it, right, in terms of yep. making sure that you can get paid quite easily compared to what people are used to think going to courts yep. and all that sort of stuff, right? So as a lawyer, as a barrister, it's probably not in your favour to tell the whole world about it. Oh, no, it is. <laughs> it, it, look, it, it's it's really cool. Um, it's an amazing piece of law. Um, so do you want to explain the key aspects of sure. it to us? Uh, you know, what builders at least need to understand. Okay, so it's a payment regime. So every invoice you send irrespective of whether it's residential job, commercial job, whether it's a floor sanding, um, putting on a roof, plumbing, electrical, anything that's effectively construction, you can issue or re issue your invoice as a payment claim. So you take your standard invoice and say you're using a zero um, uh, system, you go in or you get your accountant to do it, because they've got editing rights, and you make a few changes to your invoice. And by making these changes, you are making it an official payment claim. And the changes are that you've got to have a due date for payment, which if you're using zero, you'll have that anyway. You've got to state the period during which the work for this claim, assuming it's a progress claim, you to state the period during what, for which it's claimed. So you might say 1st of July to 31st of July. You don't have to get it exactly right. you just got to put a period. 
then you've got to indicate how you calculated the amount. Now, if you've got a lump sum contract with milestone payments, real easy. You just put milestone, whatever number, etc. If you're doing a charge up, um, then you've got to show the rates um, for your staff. You've got to show how all the materials were calculated. And I always suggest, look, as good practice, you should really have a detailed, um, you know, something like an Excel sheet or a run sheet. Um, you, you can even provide copies of your timesheets. My, my experience is the more transparent you are, the better. Yeah. Especially with Cost Plus on a residential job. I mean, it can work very well, but it does require a bit more work in terms of transparency. Um, so that indicates how it's calculated. And you've got to state this is a payment claim under the Construction Contracts Act 2002. You've got to state that. So that's all 2003? 2002. Oh, is it? 2002. 2002. Okay. So it came into effect in the 1st of April 2003. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Um, but even if you got that year date wrong, it'd still be compliant. The courts won't get caught up in people making technical mistakes. They don't worry about that. Even if you got the due date for payment wrong, they'll go, yep, no, we'll still accept it's compliant. My experience of the judges, and I've done many, many, many claims for um, expired payment claims that haven't been paid, is that the judges are pretty receptive to the Construction Contracts Act. They like to see contractors getting paid. Um, so that's, that's certainly been my experience. Um, and it's a very nice, simple law for them to enforce as well. So making those amendments to your invoice is pretty easy. And then once you've done it, your template's good to go. So every single invoice you've got is going to be a payment claim. But there's one further thing you've got to do. And it, again, it doesn't matter if it's residential or commercial, but you've got to add what's called a Form 1 information sheet. And you can, if you just Google it, Form 1 information sheet, Construction Contracts Act, you'll find it. But that has to be attached to every single invoice you send out, every single one. That's actually the law. You're, required, you're obliged to put that and attach it. So what's Form 1? Form 1 is an a explanation of what happens if they don't pay your payment claim or if they don't respond in time, in writing, to dispute it. And it tells them how they've got to dispute it. Because they can't just say we dispute your invoice. They've got to do it. They've got to follow the process. So that's got to be attached. In my experience, no one ever reads it. And I've had so many builders and other traders say to me, oh, look, I don't want to give the client an impression that it's, you know, sending them this invoice or this sheet of fine print and they're going to go, what the hell's going on here? And I've said to them, well, you're obliged to because it's the law, but what's wrong with it? It makes you look professional. It's so a good a, thing to so have. So that's very much like a just a, a form, a templated form that you yeah, can it's attach. Yeah, it's a pretty much a one-pager. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it just explains in plain English what happens if they don't pay, etc. Okay. So, um, look, a lot of my clients who have used this for many years don't even think about it. They, they just go, yep, of course it's the right way to do it. This is the right way to do it. Um, so what happens when you send that payment claim? So what you've effectively done is you've supercharged your invoice. You've turned it into something different. You've, you've turned it into something that has legal power. And the legal power is this. If they do not respond to dispute your payment claim within the time frame set in your contract, which under certified builders, master builders, is five working days, so it's pretty tight. If they don't respond within five working days, assuming you've got those contracts, disputing the invoice, payment claim, and setting out the reasons why they dispute it. That's crit critical. They've got to set out what the reasons why. They can't just hide behind a random comment like, you know, the wife's upset because you right. put some muddy footprints on the carpet. That's so it'd be almost like a, something that they'd say it almost in court, like a, some sort of like argument yeah. of why they're not going to – that's not reasonable yeah. for them to pay. It's similar to what you'd expect to see from a quantity server – issuing a payment schedule, payment certificate, where you'd go, you know, Concierge Servo would make it look really nice and pretty, but they'd have a short reason going, um, might, you know, an example might be, um, you've claimed 95%, don't accept that it's at that percentage because you haven't finished off the insulation to this area. Full stop. Specific. It's got to be that, it's got to be crystal clear about what is going on. It doesn't have to go into chapter and verse, but it's got to, it's got to indicate so you understand why they're not paying that part. 
And then they've got to state what amount they are going to pay. So it's, it's forcing the person who receives your payment claim to actually properly engage. Right. The onus is on them now to, yep. yeah. Yeah. So they've got to engage and they've got to say what they're going to pay. So, you know, if they're really hostile, they'll put no or zero. But they've got to do that because that's part of the requirement. And we call that a payment schedule. So it's payment claim. They respond with a payment schedule. So what happens if they don't issue a payment schedule, but they don't pay? So what you can do then, and this is the magic of it, is that you can recover your debt and you're entitled to recover all your legal fees in doing so. And so a huge amount of work that I used to do um, was tradies would send me through an expired payment claim and say, hey Finn, these guys haven't paid, can you send a letter of demand? I'd send a letter of demand and I'd say, you need to pay this. This is the effect of the Construction Contracts Act. You're out of time to dispute it. You've got to pay now. So just clarifying, if they don't reply within that period, it's done. They yep. have no more argument. Irrespective of any argument they've got, they've got to pay. They've got to pay. They can argue later through the normal process. But they first have to pay. They've got to pay. <laughs> <laughs>